Here are 5 interesting restaurants and cafes that you could try on your next trip to Chiang Mai, Thailand. Hi, I'm Ronnie Pe and welcome back to my channel where we explore food, places, and culture. Whether you're looking for authentic Northern Thai cuisine featured on the Michelin Guide, Thai-Japanese fusion cuisine, a cute restaurant in the middle of nowhere, or a couple of Instagrammable cafes, this video has got you covered. This was my first trip to Chiang Mai, so I wanted to try authentic local food while being on the safe side for my first meal here. So the Michelin guide was consulted, and one of the recommendations was a restaurant called Han Teng Chiang Mai, located near Chiang Mai University. So according to the Michelin guide, locals have been flocking here for its delicious, competitively priced Northern Thai fare for over a decade. First of two things to note here, competitively priced. I mean, just look at this menu. Most dishes are just 60 Thai baht, less than 2 US dollars or 150 pesos. That's oddly cheap for a Michelin restaurant, you might be thinking. Well, while they are actually on the Michelin guide, they do not have a Michelin star. Instead, they have what is called a Bib Gourmand. Bib restaurants are what the Michelin guide consider to be the best value for money restaurants, offering a 3 course meal at a reasonable price. And I would say 50 to 60 Thai baht per dish is very reasonable. By the way, no credit cards here, just pay with cash only. So I ordered 4 dishes, 2 servings of rice, and 1 refreshing cup of Thai milk tea. I got the stir-fried glass noodles with salted egg, deep-fried streaky pork, shrimp tempura, though not the typical Japanese-style tempura that we're used to seeing, and of course, khao soy. Currently ranking number 1 as the world's best-rated noodle soup dish according to Taste Atlas. It was served with a slice of lime and a few other things. That was a big meal. Needless to say, I got full. But there is a but. Second of two things to note about this restaurant. Locals have been flocking here. It is a restaurant for locals, serving local cuisine. This was my first interaction with Northern Thai cuisine. So the flavors were, hmm, shall I say, unfamiliar? and might take some getting used to for some people, including myself. It could be an acquired taste for non-Northern Thai people. If you plan to go there, go there with an open mind. You may or may not like it, but you're there to sample local cuisine after all. So the next stop is Baristro Cafe, an Instagrammable cafe featuring modern Japanese-style architecture. You have to buy an entrance ticket to enter the cafe. I think it was about 80 Thai baht or $2.30 or 125 Philippine pesos. That amount is consumable though. You can use your ticket to pay for your food and drinks. So since you'd most likely want to go there if you want to take photos, here are some photos of mine. Next up is Kao Soi. This is my absolute favorite on this list. Very similar sounding to the dish Khao Soi, but the restaurant's name is pronounced as Khao Soi based on how it's written in Thai. This is a Thai-Japanese fusion restaurant, and let me tell you, based on my experience there, it easily rakes in very high scores across almost all aspects. I got the dry stir-fry Khao Soi with beef shank, gyoza, unlimited iced tea, Although I forgot what kind of iced tea it was, but I remember the flavor was very light and very refreshing. And for dessert, I got the yuzu panna cotta. <laughs> the food quality. Mm, I like Japanese food. I like Thai food. And the marriage of those two flavors, just wow. So food, taste, and quality, they deserve nothing less than 5 stars. If I had more time to spend in Chiang Mai, I would have probably gone back there. The service is very, very good and easy 5 stars. From queuing outside the restaurant to the dining experience, even up to leaving the restaurant, they remembered even that I do not speak Thai, so they speak English to me. The staff members were all very friendly, attentive, and accommodating. It got me thinking though, what is it that the owner is doing to make the staff provide such good and genuine service. Whatever that is, they're doing it right. The ambience is very nice too. It's a little bit dark and tight inside, but it felt like they were batting for an intimate dining experience. I don't know how to rate it, but I would say that I liked it. Now for the price, it's crazy. 
it's very affordable for this quality of food and service. Just around 300 to 400 Thai baht for what I had. That's around 9 to 11 US dollars or 450 to 650 Philippine pesos. I know it's not dirt cheap, but for the food I had and the service I received, it was amazing value for money. Actually, I wish I could go back there again right now. So before you proceed, if you've been enjoying this video, please gently click or tap on the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's free and it helps me out in producing these videos. Now, let's go somewhere far from the city. And I mean quite far. In the middle of rice fields, perhaps? If you're looking for a cute but not so small resto cafe smack in the middle of nowhere, you should try out Rong Tan Ruang Kao. It kind of sounds like wrong turn in English. It kind of makes beautiful sense though. It's about 30 kilometers or 22 miles, give or take, from Chiang Mai Old City. And it feels like something that you'd accidentally discover because you took a wrong turn. This resto cafe has a lot of cute spots where you can take cute photos. Here are some visuals. When you're done with your shoot, you can go ahead and get food inside. The food is very reasonably priced and delicious. I got this big pad thai for the cost of just like one regular pad thai in Bangkok. You also get a very nice, idyllic view of farmland and nature while enjoying your food. This place was very comforting and relaxing for me. A good place to slow down and take a breather in the middle of your trip. And then last, but certainly not the least, is Chom Cafe and Restaurant. This is the last because I went here on my way back to the airport to return to Bangkok. It's a good modern spot to chill down and spend some time before you face the war zone that is an airport. We know how stressful airports can be. Chom Cafe has a man-made forest within their property. Very Instagrammable and it would make for magical or mystical looking photos. I actually wasn't too hungry when I went there but I had mango sticky rice and Thai milk tea. It was delicious but not as memorable as my experience in Khao so I. But I think aside from food, you visit Chom Cafe for their man-made landscape. So, which of these restaurants or cafes did you like the most? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So that's it for me. Again, this is Ronnie Pet, and I'll see you again in another video where we explore food, places, and culture.